Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So during the midst of this coronavirus, there is something that Satan wants to attack, which are three things. During the midst of this coronavirus situation, how Satan and the globalist agenda is going to be used to attack God's people and the church is one, spiritual complacency. So they feel like dead and doing nothing for the Lord. The second is soul winning. Soul winning has been the crucial key where people get saved and are drawn to Bible-believing churches, which has prevented from the globalist agenda from growing. So it has always been a Christian principle. The third thing is the fellowship, the gathering of believers. And with this shelter at place, people at pretty much quote-unquote lockdown, this is how Satan can try to use this situation to deaden the church. But instead, as the past 2,000 years of history where Satan has used persecution to destroy the church, it actually made the church stronger, Christianity grow bigger. So we should be doing the same thing with this situation. So in order not to be spiritually complacent, that's why it's very important to spend your time reading your Bible, praying. Pick some passages during this timeline where you can start memorizing verses that can help you in your Christian walk. Some chapters of the Bible, challenge yourself to memorize chapters of the Bible. Make it fun and challenging. This can also be a great time where you can get together with your church or with your friends or your family members and have like a little bit of a competition or a little bit of motivation with memorizing chapters. Make it fun. It can be enjoyable. It doesn't have to be hard. Psalms 119 is the largest chapter in your Bible. If any of you out there can memorize the whole thing, perhaps maybe you can send our church email the uh, audio link, and then uh, we could probably even upload that online. Who knows? I don't know. But anyway, the point is, is that uh, just do some things where you can challenge yourself, memorize some scriptures. Uh, Romans 10 is a great chapter. Galatians 5 is a great chapter. I would highly recommend for you to look through the chapters that I suggested or look through your Bible and find a chapter that you think will be most life applicable, life applicable to you. So do that and it will be an incredible blessing. Spend some time in prayer. Uh, I highly recommend buying E.M. Bounds' book on prayer. E.M. Bounds' book on prayer will totally transform your life in prayer. Spend time reading that, and then you can change your prayer method. I think that will be very helpful to you. Now would be a great time, if you do have money, to buy some books from www.kjv1611.org. If you would go through that, then buy some books and spend time just studying, studying, studying. I have discipleship classes on our YouTube channel. Uh, go to the playlist section. You'll find discipleship, beginners, start over there, and it can totally transform your life. And then the second place, you can go to discipleship intermediate. Uh, one of them teaches about soul winning, so you don't have to worry too much about not going out soul winning through that lesson on discipleship, but just try practice in your home as much as you can and continue on with the other lessons. I would also mention this concerning about soul winning. So that's what Satan wants to do, get rid of street preaching. We can no longer preach the gospel on the street, knock on doors, pass out tracts. I mean, we can, in a sense, pass out tracts in a lot of other states. They're not uh, closed down like we are, but there are countries around the world that are, and us in California are at that state as well. So during these cases, there are still many ways you can give the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to other. Paul, you know, he was in pretty much shut up at home, and Christians under Roman persecutions, a greater majority of them could not be able to freely knock on doors or preach the gospel on the streets. So it is your duty and your job to do what they did to spread the gospel. I mean, you got technology that they don't have. So use that to your advantage. You got a telephone book that they didn't have back in 1,000, more than 1,000 years ago in history where persecuted Christians had to somehow secretly spread the gospel. Go through a telephone book and then find the addresses. Order a bunch of chick tracks from www.chick.com and then order a whole stack of chick tracks and then just 
ship ship them out, mail them to each address in the telephone book. Do that. Some of you who live in a neighborhood, use the opportunity where you're hiking. See, it's for hiking, right? They allow that. So you can go hiking and then just simply leave a track on the door. And then if your state allows it, your district allows it, use the opportunity to knock on the door and witness to them. You might say, well, I don't know how to witness. Well, that's why I watch the discipleship videos. If you watch the discipleship videos, it can teach you how to do soul winning. Encourage yourself to do that. If you can't, just leave a track on the house door and you can cover more ground that way. You can even go further distance where you can use that uh, excuse for hiking. The government can allow that. Use that excuse for hiking and then just be wise about it and then leave a track on every house door. And then maybe use gloves when doing that so that you don't get fearful and others don't get fearful about getting some kind of germ or something during this coronavirus situation. I would also recommend, since you got technology, look at Facebook accounts. Look at all sorts of Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts, Instagrams, etc. Use that as an opportunity to make a gospel format, simple and easy, and then just uh, post it to each Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. If you don't know how to do it, Go to our main YouTube channel. As soon as you look at the home page on the YouTube channel, there's a video titled How to Be Saved and a Real Bible Believer. Copy and paste that. You can take opportunity to take a lot of our other videos. There's a video on why millions of Christians can't go to heaven. Copy and paste that. Send that through all sorts of Facebook, Twitter accounts. I mean, this is a great chance where you can spread the gospel to practically hundreds if not thousands to millions of people. It's a great opportunity and a chance. Jack Chick once said, you pass out three tracks per day, you'll reach more than a thousand souls by the end of the year. Imagine if every single Christian, saved believer around the world did that. We'd practically give every single person around the world the gospel. Why don't we do that? Let's encourage each other to do that right now. Especially through technology, you'll practically reach everybody by that point. You can spread other videos like Amazing Dispensational Truth from Genesis to Revelation. That can rescue so many people from 90% of wrong doctrines. Pick whatever video you find in our channel. I mean, be wise. Be wise about which video would suit the person. Maybe Pastor Kim's, Pastor Kim's direct method is what they need, where he's critiquing and exposing false preachers, or where he's in a trying to minister to people and feed them with so much knowledge, or where he's being kind and trying to encourage and motivate people. Try to be wise about certain videos, too, where you think it might be very helpful to people. Great chance to spread the gospel. Some of you who got loved ones and family members, this is your great chance now. Perhaps uh, get these chick tracks, write a nice card, and then mail them to all your family and friends and loved ones, telling them, that, hey, I sent this to you because of the coronavirus situation, just letting you know that I remember you, I'm praying for you, and say something nice. And then at the end, there's that chick track. So use that as an opportunity. Uh, I'm sure that they can be thankful for the card where you're thinking about them. So this is a great chance to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it. And then the last thing is concerning fellowship. So I'd recommend that if you're in... Bible-believing churches around the world, or if you're in shutdown, use the Zoom platform. Zoom is a great place where you can contact several people, and just like meeting in church is so necessary to encourage and increase our spiritual growth together, use that Zoom platform once a week. Maybe you could use that for church. Some of you might say, our church is too large, so we can't fit so many people on Zoom. Well, th this is a great chance where you can train different people so that people can, themselves can grow. If you elect certain people to be like team leaders, so to speak, this is a great chance for them to grow, not just be spirit, not just be dependent on the pastor. Sometimes churches grow too big because they're dependent on the pastor, not on the word of God where they're being fed like they're supposed to and growing. So I hope that some pastors heard that and that this situation humbled you and convicted you that that's why building a big church is not all that. It's more important on the quality spiritually feeding your people. So try doing that. So elect team leaders, 
have them like about five to six. Every single person has pretty much a free platform if they have like about five people or six people at Zoom. And then have them meet once a week and fellowship with each other. And then the pastor can meet with those team leaders and they can fellowship with each other and the pastor can keep touch with everybody. A lot of you who are in churches have phone numbers. And if you haven't, then reach out to these people. Talk to your pastor. And then use it as an opportunity to just simply call them. Not that you're annoying them or that you want to bother them, but it's just, hey, you know, during this coronavirus situation, I just want to let you know that I thought about you. I'm praying for you. How are you doing? And then use that to finally build a fellowship. Sometimes people attend church just to attend and then leave. This is a great time to finally spend quality time, proper quality time with them. Not only that, everyone's doing hiking or going outdoors. Use that as an opportunity where a team leader can get five or six people at most, and then it can appearingly look like a family or something like that, and then they can just go out hiking. I know that I did that with some of my people, and no one uh, got to me on that one or arrested me. I've seen so many people who are families. They're not like six feet of distance from each other. They're all together. It's only one group being six feet distant from the other group. See, that's the only thing. So with this one group, we can be, which can be like about five to six people, keep that together. You can keep that together and then hike. And imagine going out in the beautiful outdoors of God's creation and just, man, isn't that awesome? Just fellowshipping together, five, six people talking about the Lord, looking at God's creation. Sing some hymns maybe over there. Have the whole people hiking around. Hear some hymns. Pray together. Have a prayer meeting up there. Maybe if you have a prayer meeting, some people walking by might get under conviction or even ask you, hey, I would like you to pray for me about this one. Can you do that? And you can say, oh, sure, by the way. And then you can take out a chick track and then offer them a track. Usually people keep away from you when you offer them a track at this moment. But if you get that closure where the person's talking to you at the hike and asking for prayer, you can... They can more likely receive that track when you offer it to them. See, there are so many things what you can do to fellowship. I know that if you pay more attention to the rules and regulations, you can find certain slip holes. I know that uh, a few days ago, California, things keep changing, obviously, but I do remember a few days ago in California, they had this slip hole of a rule and regulation where if people have an event, they can go outside together. And then during this event, you can all go outside and then have fellowship over there. Uh, but I don't know how it's like at obviously New York and so many other places. But see, just start looking at the rules, the regulations, find some slip holes where you can be able to keep some form of church attendance or fellowship. As far as church is concerned, obviously we have an online platform. So preach what you can online so that people, they can watch the sermon or recommend to different people certain pastors that are live stream uh, our church is on live stream recommend that one so that they can attend church and perhaps this is a great chance where people who are attending paul's churches if you offer them our live stream channel then they can watch that live stream and then become a bible believer use every opportunity that you can some people are worried and they use hebrews ten twenty five about not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching. So some people think, isn't this compromising where we're stuck at home and not attending church? Well, if Paul's the author of the book of Hebrews, didn't he violate that rule by being stuck at home for two years against his own desire and will by the Roman government? But what was he doing? He was not being angry, rebellious, complaining, whining, being discouraged, and just gave up and spiritually complacent. No, he did what he could to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's do that too. Plus, it'd be a shameful thing that you embarrass your testimony as a Christian, and then you get arrested, worst case, and then if you do get, get arrested, then what happens? Then all of a sudden, two months later, hey, you know, this restriction's lifted, you can meet together at church, and you're still stuck in jail or in prison. And not only that, you have to pay a heavy fine, and you lost so much money that you could have used to support missions. See, so it's too early to tell. Now, obviously, if this goes on forever, then Bible-believing Christians, see, that's when we have to 
start taking measures and thinking ahead. And then we don't know what the situation will entail. Depending on how the situation turns out later on in life, then we have to realize that we got to take a stand and do whatever it takes to do some form of meeting in some different way. So here's the thing is that don't jump the gun. That's one thing I notice about people who are upset with what's going on with the coronavirus or getting discouraged. You jump the gun too soon. One day at a time, people don't learn to wait on the Lord and to see. I mean, look, it's been only uh, two, three weeks. I mean, the, the Lord, how he does things is that he doesn't answer your prayer, does things like that, like one day, two day, three day, or within two, three weeks. I mean, just take time to be holy. Take one step at a time. Let the Lord show you step by step. I'm wondering during the past two, three weeks how much you did for the Lord. Those of you who've been complaining and whining about not attending church and uh, about what's going on in our world. See, the devil already got you. Now take this opportunity to do something for the Lord rather than wasting your time.